Hey everybody, it's Mike Jeffers, ChicagoJazz.com and ChiTownBlues.tv. We are previewing the Chicago Blues Festival. We are hanging out here at the Delmark Studios right here on Rockwell in one of the vintage studios here at Delmark where a lot of, of the legendary blues recordings have been made and a lot of them have been made by one Mr. Lindsay Alexander, a Delmark Records uh, artist. Yeah. And you are going to be performing on Friday night, June 8th, the tribute to Bob Kester on the main stage but of course Lindsay, a legend throughout the chicago blues scene throughout the entire world has toured the world so let's catch up a little bit with Lindsay. i'm going to ask you a little bit about your background so we can kind of get people up to speed and then we'll talk a little bit about what's going to happen on june 8th all right with me so are you originally from chicago no i was born in holly spring mississippi okay yeah how'd you end up coming up to chicago uh following a woman oh yeah <laughs> now, this is getting good already <laughs> So you came up and then you got into the blues scene up yeah, there. Yeah, well, uh, I was or? born in uh, in um, Holly Spring, Mississippi, and uh, my mother left uh, us with my sister, and she went to Memphis, got a job, sent back for us. So when we got there, we went to Memphis. Or so, uh, and my mother passed in '58, and I just had a brother in Chicago. Me and my other brother came to Chicago and. But I wanted to come to Chicago because I had met a girl from Chicago down there. Oh, okay. And I wanted to come see her. You yeah. needed that extra little push. Yeah. <laughs> the extra I need a reason. <laughs> <laughs> so you came to Chicago, but you were already playing down down south and stuff? Guitar no, and I wasn't. No? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I happen to be a late bloomer. Oh, okay. I had to be a late bloomer. I had played, I had a guy who would come by my house and play every day. He was a friend of mine. He had a guitar. And he was playing these songs, and uh, he taught me one song, and uh, you know. So one day, he said, "I see you later," and he left the guitar, and I haven't seen him yet. <laughs> really, he never you know, came back. He never came back. So I just, when I went to play football, I had to walk about two or three miles to play football. Oh man! And when I did that, I had to go meet my friend because I lived in the suburbs of Memphis, and they lived down in the country part there. So I went and um, I stayed a good time with me. I practiced on like boom, 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 yeah, all yeah, the way yeah. home, you know. And people would sit on the porch and say, here come Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when I got that, I can't move to uh, Chicago after I got here. And um, I met some guys and I started hanging out on 63rd Street and, and um, like McKenna Mitchell and all those mm -hmm. guys, yeah. you know, Howlin' Wolf, and um, I was hanging out with them, you know. Well, it's like the, the 708 Club, wasn't that on 47? I mean, Howlin' was there, yeah, right? The and the Muddy was Blue there. Blue Frame, and, yeah. 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 And we used to, and uh, Howlin' Wolf used to be on 43rd Street in Oakwood. So I used to go down there every Thursday listening to him, and I used to go see Lefty Diz. And all the guys, Junior Wells, and uh, Kaden played with Buddy for a little while, but for a while, but not long. Yeah. 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 And um, they, so, did they let you sit in and stuff, or are you just hanging out, or? No, they thought I wasn't good enough. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I in particular, I did. I was scared to sit in, cause I never. Knew my potentials, you know. Right, right. And um, so I formed my own band called the Hot Tomatoes, and we used to play up on 63rd Street in in St. Lawrence, and uh, and they would let us come in. We the first tune we I don't know who the guy was that made a song. Let it all hang out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know the yeah. tune. Yeah. Yeah. We learned that, and we learned it good. You yeah. Bow wire, twenty five miles of bow wire, something like boat delays and stuff like that. Right. You know? Right. So then I end up, you know. You start gigging around town and getting. Start gigging around town, you know, and I, and I kept ch a change of the band for a, a bass player I had wasn't. I just. I I learned that the better musician you have, the better you be. Mm -hmm. so, Always play with somebody better, right? Yeah. So then, and then you're going to up so, your uh, game. 
So you up, my, up my game to where I'm at now, you know. So, but, uh, you know. so why are you known as the Hoochie Coochie Man? I'm sure people are wondering. Cause well, they, can we say it on, t- on, on TV? Yeah, oh, okay. Bobby Scott, uh, Marvin C's, uh, Marvin C's made a record, uh, Hoochie Mama. Mm-hmm, yeah. And uh, my bass player used to sing it. Oh, okay. So he starts singing it. I said, you got you to gotta hoot your mama, but I'm the hoot your man. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I started singing and made my own words to it, and and everybody's, I still got it. It's recorded. Yeah, yeah I, got well, I know on, I know. everybody calls you the hoochie man. I got it on CD. And you're, you're one of those uh, blues musicians, and I don't know, maybe you'd learn this as you were coming up, but, but you know, if you see Lindsay in a club, you come off the stage. You interact with people. Oh, yeah. You go through the whole thing. I remember over at uh, Blues on Hulsa, you're outside at the bus stop, man. You're, <laughs> I'm like, where is this guy? Yeah. Is that just something that came naturally to you, just the, the showmanship it, and engaging? It, that that came because a guy named Leroy, um, Leroy Getz. Uh, right there at that, that, um, Ritz, 35th and oh, Archer. Yeah, yeah. Well, when Red and them moved, they sold that place to... Uh, me and Leroy, I used to own part of it. Oh, you place. did? Yeah. Oh. And come to that, you know, he had all this family working, and, 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 and I, I didn't see no money from right. him. <laughs> Long story just, short, that it wasn't going to work out very and good. And I'm gone, yeah. <laughs> and um, he gave me a, a wireless unit, you know, mm-hmm. and I put it on my guitar. So why, why am I be wireless? I ain't going over here, you know, <laughs> standing on the stage. Yeah, so. right. I went out there with the people. So I I want something new, and, and that's what I do now. You know, I, yeah. I, people love me because I am a fan person. You know, I go out and interact with them. I talk to them. Like they ain't got no sense. I talk like I ain't got no sense. You know? <laughs> so, but you know that, and that's the thing. You know, as a musician, especially nowadays, but even back in the day, you know, I mean, you got to engage and you got to work you, with the audience. You right? got to, you got to be likable. I can't be a, a Michael Jackson stand up there, uh, a Stevie Ray Vaughan who never move, and just people, people like that. You got, you got flaming guitars. You got all kind of guitars. Yeah. And you can get them play them, and they can play. But when I grab it, people are gonna listen and cheer me. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. So now let's talk a little bit about Delmark Records. How did you first get involved with Delmark? Was uh, you've been with Delmark for a long time? Yeah. Well, I I, I came by a uh, blues on Halston one night. Toronzo Cannon was there, mm-hmm. and Steve was shooting Toronzo recording. Toronto. Shoot a DVD, right? Didn't they put a DVD or something out? No, I think this was a, a DVD or a CD, whatever. Right. I don't know. Anyway, Toronto let me sit in. And Steve said, Come by the studio. I think we want to sign you and record you. It's okay. Yeah. So I called him four or five times, but I never could get him. Then one day I called him Bob Asher's phone. He said, I said, yeah. He said, yeah, we want to record you. I said, okay. Yeah. So You knew Bob before that, probably, because Bob's been on the scene forever. You I probably knew him, you know, but, you know, just, no, I probably knew, I knew of him, but, you know, I heard his name, and, but just say recognize him, I, I didn't, you know. Yeah. So how many releases do you have on Delmark now? Uh, three. Three? Yeah. Okay. Three. And you're going to be playing the Bob Kester tribute on June 8th on the main stage there at the Prister Pavilion for the Chicago Blues Fest, yeah. June 8th through the 10th. But Friday yeah. night they're tributing Bob for 65 years in the record business. So you're going to be on stage there. Do you have any idea what's going to happen that night? Because it's going to be packed with well, a bunch of artists. Well, what's going to happen that night, I'm going to blow, the, I'm going to blow it away. <laughs> <laughs> you might go out in the crowd and never come back. No. <laughs> I, I got to do this, uh, I think Big Boys, Big Boys Odom did this song, uh, All About the Business. Mm-hmm, yeah. I got to do that one with me and uh, Jimmy Flynn, Billy Flynn. And I don't think I play on that, but I'm going to sing. And I already know that I do this on my show. What I'm going to do when I get there, you know. Yeah. So I'm practicing and rehearsing and stuff like that. And then after that, I go. I got a. 
I got a uh, the beer garden. I got I put my band in the. Oh yeah. Yeah. What's the name? Budweiser. Budweiser. Oh okay. Yeah Budweiser yeah. Budweiser stage. I go to Budweiser stage. Oh. Yeah. All right. I so think I played Budweiser stage before that, but anyway, I, on that same day I got all this. Oh, so on Friday yeah. you're playing in the afternoon, and then you're playing at night. Yeah. Double dipping. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, I, I, I have to say I had three successful CD with them on. But the one I got now, it's the most selling CD I ever had. Really? Two cat. Okay. I sell over hundred a month. Wow. And I don't I don't play much of the rest of the guy, but I sell over hundred a month. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. But you know yeah. that, that's the the people like what we talked about. You're engaging them at the shows. They yeah. love it. And I mean that's that's where you're you're probably yeah. selling them out. But. With with you, you're also playing a lot. So why don't we tell everybody where they can catch you? You got regular spots. I'm sure you're playing at usually, right? And yeah, you get a hold my of you. regular stop is uh, you know like uh, you can catch me every Friday night. I'm at uh, six fifty North Dearborn place called Mom's Place. Oh, okay. That's a new venue which I've been there for a while. And man, like me, and they have me there every every Friday. And every Sunday, I'm at Kingston Mine. Oh, okay. Kingston Mine. I'm doing a, a host of jam there for the people that that plays, but they don't ever play in the mine or to an established joint, you know, with the crowd in there, you know. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I host that, and when I get through hosting that, my band come on at 9.30, and we play hour on hour off until two thirty in the morning, you know. So that's every Sunday. Every Sunday. And on Friday, are you going from the Blues Fest to your gig at? Uh, yeah. Okay, so you're going to be playing just down the street from the Blues Fest. So yeah. if you come to the Blues Fest, see him on the main stage, then you can go see him at the club right down right. the street in Dearborn. Okay. Right. That's 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 what it's all about. And um, on a Saturday, it's kind of, I think I get once a month. Uh, sometime twice a month at a club called Spectrum. Oh, on, in Greek Hawthorne. Town. Yeah, in Greek Town. In Greek Town, yeah, they're having yeah. blues there now. That's right. Yeah, I, I, well, I was the band that brought it there. Oh. I was, I've been there about four or five years. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's at like twice a month at Spectrum. Yeah, sometimes I was there every Saturday. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know how they start switching things up yeah, and all yeah, that business, everyone. you know. Think they got a better idea. You know? <laughs> I tell me, we're gonna go to some hip hop music. I go there, he calling me. Can you get me a band? I need a band. And <laughs> what kind you think I'm gonna get you? Get you a blues band? <laughs> yeah, right. How about what, mine? Yeah, and that's what he got. You know, <laughs> yeah. so everybody come in. And I happen to go there, and uh, for my night that he gave me, place empty. You know? Yeah. Yeah. He said, "Why ain't nobody come see you?" I said, "Well, those people don't know I'm here." You gotta do it regularly. You won't give me a, a schedule. I have to be on a schedule. Yeah. And then I do House of Blues mm -hmm. once a month. Okay. I do Charles Crab House every first Tuesday of the month. Oh, right on Hubbard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then I do um, um, the House Pub in St. Charles mm -hmm. about once or twice every two months. You know. Okay. Yeah. So. You're out and about. Yeah, You're and busy. I got some. I got some stuff coming up in Iowa. Yeah, Iowa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got a thing. I got to do that. Now. Well, and what's your website? LindsayAlexander.com. And we're gonna link that up below because you've got to see him. Obviously, June eighth, the tribute to Delmark yeah. Records. On the stage, I love the fact that you're right down the street then at your regular gig, so you can get a taste of Lindsay on the main stage and go see him live at that club. Yeah. But you know, he's got things popping up. I know you're at Blues on Halstead all the time, oh, and yeah. things like that. So check his website out. We'll link it up below, and be sure to check him out. June 8th, tribute to Delmark Records, right on the main stage to Bob Kester, and you got to see him live at the club, man. He's the man. Appreciate you sitting down. All right. All right. All Thanks right. for watching.